Hey, thanks for tuning in to Shane Flint Outdoors. This is one of our fish chatter episodes. This is where we talk to other YouTube fishermen, find out what inspired them to start sharing their content on YouTube, find out a little bit about them and their channel, and what can we expect to see on their channel, as well as maybe just tell a fish story or two. Hey, today's guest is Brad Hancock from Fish On. Hey, everybody. Our guest today is Brad Hancock from the Fish On YouTube channel. And Brad, thanks a lot for uh, joining us today. And I appreciate you taking the time to uh, have a conversation with us. And anytime we can have a conversation about fishing, it's a good, usually a good conversation. So why don't you tell us a little about you and uh, where you're from and your background? I appreciate it, Shane. I thank you for having me on here. I think uh, talking about fishing is second only to actually getting out there and doing it. So um, I, I'm a retired Navy. I live in the Northern California area near Quantico. Um, I've been here since 2006. Uh, when I, when I joined the Navy, I had two goals and one was to never spend time on a ship and the other one was never come to DC. And I never really spent any time on a ship, even in 21 years in the Navy, but I did end up in DC. And, uh, as much as I didn't want to be here, it's a good place to, uh, to find a job after the fact. So that's kind of why I, uh, I, I stuck around here. Um, and from there, um, I, I, I fished when I was a kid a, a lot. Uh, my dad had a little 10 bass boat, a, uh, um, a Fisher Marine, which was kind of the predecessor to the bass tracker, uh, boats. And, uh, so I grew up fishing with him there. And when I got to be old enough that I could drive, he let me take it out on my own a little bit and went away to college. And I kind of quit fishing for probably close to 20 years. Uh, I do a little trout fishing here and there and a little farm pond fishing here and there, but, uh, but I didn't really do any serious fishing. And then about, um, 2017, I guess I, I decided I really wanted to start doing it again and, uh, joined a local bass club here called Potomac Bass Masters. Uh, started out without a boat. Um, I, I had, uh, I had saved up some money to buy myself a boat and my daughter at that point decided that she uh, wanted a horse. And uh, she and my wife conspired against me and uh, my boat money went to, to buy a horse. Uh, and uh, I mean, it was good for her. She, it helped her out a lot. She, uh, she learned how to ride really well. She went to nationals a couple of times. Uh, so it, it, it was a good thing to spend money on, but, uh, but I had to wait a couple more years to get my boat. So I fished as a co-angler for a couple of years, uh, then bought my boat and, and uh, that's kind of where we are today. Awesome. So I, you know, I've watched your channel, uh, Brad, and I, I see you do a lot of fishing down on Lake Ann, a lot of your tournaments. As a matter of fact, your last tournament, you did real well. Um, is tell us a little bit about, you know, is Lake Anna the only place you like to fish or, you know, where's the other place you'd like to fish here in Northern Virginia? Well, like I said, I joined Potomac Bassmasters and we're, uh, actually headquartered out, out on the Potomac by the name. You, you might guess that. Uh, we, so uh, probably 60 or 75% of our tournaments go out of, uh, Leesylvania state park. Uh, so I spend a good bit of time on the Potomac. Uh, I, I still quite honestly haven't learned it very well. The title title fishing is, is difficult for me. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. Well, um, but, uh, we do have a couple or three tournaments down at Lake Anna every year. We ha usually have one at uh, Lake Gaston, one at Lake Kerr, uh, and one at the Chickahominy river. Uh, and maybe another one thrown in there somewhere or other, but th those are the main, main areas that we fish. And, uh, I also started fishing the, um, uh, the Sunday morning series down at, down at Lake Anna a couple of times at the end of this year. Uh, and a, a couple of my last videos were either prepping for a Potomac Bassmaster tournament, fishing the Potomac Bassmaster tournament or fishing that Sunday, Sunday series. And, uh, I, I have done fairly well this season. I, I, uh, I, got i think uh four second place finishes and a couple of wins in uh so uh, i i ended up third in our overall points there's obviously a couple people that did better than me but i'm pretty pretty pleased with the what i did this year yeah that is awesome um and you get a few wins a few seconds you can't complain about that and overall not at all great yeah so i gotta ask you i did see the i think the big bash you had this last video was five five point six pounds is that your biggest bass that you've caught uh in a tournament uh, that's the biggest one I've caught in a tournament. I actually caught my PB early in the year. There's a, um, a kid that lives down the street from me that had, uh, his parents, uh, don't really fish much. And, uh, he and I've gotten together and I've taken him under my wing and I take him out a few times a year when I get the opportunity to, uh, when I have time off from work and he's not in school or whatever. And, uh, we got him out uh, on the Potomac and, uh, he, he caught a, uh, a 10 and a half pound snakehead, which is the first snakehead that he caught. And, uh, he was, he was very pleased with that. Uh, and, and I must say it was a, 
great experience watching him catch that snakehead. But uh, I think it was that same day or another trip very similar to then. I caught a six and a half pound uh, largemouth. Uh, so that's my PB large mouth. Uh, like I said, it wasn't in a tournament. The tournament biggest one was that 5.6 one. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, you'll, this video will come out, um, probably next week for me, I had a crazy, um, fishing experience two days ago where I was out, uh, filming how to set up your new bait caster reel. I got a new bait caster. I thought, well, I'll put that on my channel, how to set the break and the magnetic break. And I, uh, you know, casted it a couple times and even said on the video, I was like, Hey, I just wanted to show you how to set this up. I don't going to, don't plan on catching any fish. I turned the video off, Brad, the next cast, I caught a seven pound bass. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, got, it, I got the fish on video, so I'll release it, but it, oh. it was just a crazy experience. I was just in my uh, local, local pond here in seven lakes. Um, I didn't expect to catch one that big out of there, but um, the experience of, Hey, you, you can catch a big bass even in December, but if you're not out there casting, you won't catch them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they say the winter is, is the best time to catch the big ones. And I, you know, most of us don't do a lot of fishing in the winter, but, uh, I think it was, it was February or March when I caught that one on the Potomac. So they're out there. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's going to be my next question. Are you going to slow down fishing uh, due to winter? Or are you just going to, you know, um, you know, put, put the boat up until spring. What's your plan? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of put up right now. I mean, I could go drag it out any day that I wanted to and, and, and take it out and fish. And I, I don't do a lot to winterize it. I just make sure it doesn't have any water in it or anything. It's going to freeze in the, in the motor or in the live wells or whatever. But, uh, generally I don't do a lot of fishing from probably mid November through about February, you know, the middle or end of February. Those are kind of my off, off months. Um, occasionally I will drag it out uh, if there's some good weather and do some crappie fishing or something like that, but I don't do a lot of bass fishing during that time period. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying it out this year. I, I uh, went yesterday actually after I caught that big bass and, and, uh, you know, it was pretty warm yesterday and the uh, wind was blowing out of the Southwest. So I went out on Able Lake over here and I did catch a few. Um, and they were, you know, I think the biggest was two and a half, two ten, something like that. But, uh, it, it is tough fishing in the winter. You yeah, gotta, it, you it can slow be. Down. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably the biggest problem that I have is I I always want to power fish. I always start off. I mean, if you you've watched a few of my videos, pretty much every video I start off with the top water, uh, and and I'm dragging something fast and trying to get things to hit it. And if I can get them to do it, I think that's probably how we all like to hit. I like to fish first, but uh, you know, it it doesn't take me long till I end up going to the drop shot and slowly dragging it along or something. But, uh, but I, I greatly prefer that fast fishing if that's what you can do. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I go to, I go to power fishing right off unless I just know it's one of those days, like you said, you're going to, you have to go slow. Um, but you know, it, it's always great. Uh, especially if you can catch them on top water, it's, it's so fun when you can see those bass bust the top of the, the water and grabbing your bait. And my last interview uh, was with the Michigan fisherman and his favorite bait is the whopper plopper. Yeah. And, yep. and I noticed you, you caught a few on the whopper plopper yourself this past year. Yeah. I'd have to say the buzz bait is a little bit more of a favorite to me than the whopper plopper. But to me, those two are almost interchangeable. Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, if, you know, if it's open water and there's no grass or anything else, the whopper plopper probably gives you a little bit better hookup ratio. Uh, but I like the buzz bait cause I can throw it anywhere and I don't really have to worry about it getting stuck much. Yeah, I agree with you. I like that buzz bait too. So I, you know, this leads into, you know, what, you know, everybody has their comfort bait. What, what are you going to go to if you're, you know, going out there first thing, what's the bait you prefer to, to start throwing? Well, I mean, like, like I just said, I pretty much always have that buzz bait tied on. And, uh, if, uh, if I feel like the conditions are decent for it, you know, if the water's 50 degrees or warmer, uh, and there's, you know, not a lot of wind or, or even sometimes if there is a good bit of wind, I'll, I'll, I'll start chunking that buzz bait. And if I can get them, if I can get them on that, I'll keep throwing it all day long. Uh, but usually that's kind of more of an, uh, you know, a morning thing and come midday, they'll, they'll stop hitting the top water too much. So then I'll switch over to, uh, spinner baits, another, another power lure for me. I like throwing the spinner bait quite a bit and, uh, um, I, I, I have a lot of crank baits. I don't throw them a lot. That's something I need to work on. Um, also need to work on throwing a jig. That's something else that, you know, I, everybody talks about catching big bass on the jig, but I just don't have a lot of confidence in it. I got to, I got to spend some time one of these days out there 
gaining a little confidence in it. Uh, drop shot is a, uh, is something that I do have a lot of confidence in. And, you know, people say you're, you're going after the small fish when you do that. But, uh, one, one of my videos down there, Dan, I pulled in a, you know, five and a half pounder on a drop shot and it, it essentially won the tournament for us. Um, I like the shaky head a lot too. Um, yeah. so I, I guess those are the, the main ones, but you know, like every fisherman, I've got way more, more tackle than I'll ever throw. So, yeah, I I'm guilty of, uh, I have a, I don't carry a tackle box in my boat. I have a tackle tub. It's just, <laughs> it's just a tub that I have tied down in my boat and it's overflowing with tackle. But, uh, yeah, you know, I've heard the same thing about drop shot. People think you're catching small fish on a drop shot, but I mean, it, it, it's a bass catcher from big bass to small bass. You know, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's uh, you, you'll get a lot of quantity on it, but you can get some quality on it sometimes too. And that's uh, something else I started probably two years ago. Now, I guess I started pouring some of my own plastics. And uh, again, if, if you watch my videos, you'll see me mention, you know, this is a hand poured worm or something like that. And uh, so I, I do a lot of drop shotting and a lot of shaky heads that are, uh, that are plastics I poured myself. And that's, there's, a, there's a, a very good feeling when you can go out there and you can, you can find the fish out in the open water and you can throw a bait to them that you've poured yourself and you can bring some in with it. And that's, uh, it's, it's kind of brings it all together for me. Yeah, I agree. That is awesome. That is awesome. So Brad, if you were to set back and think about a, uh, and this is kind of where I say, let's tell a fishing story. If you could tell me, in your recent memory or even growing up, whenever it was, what, what's an epic fishing day for you that you, that just comes to your memory? Maybe it's your biggest bass or the most fish you caught. Um, what would you say is your, uh, your most epic fishing day? Well, I, I'll give you a two. And, and one was, was taking that kid out and letting him catch that, uh, that snakehead. Uh, uh, and it's, it's kind of funny the way he caught it. We, we were fishing in some relatively shallow water and he kind of threw back up into some trash and, you know, that's where the snakehead typically hang out. And he, he got a, a backlash when he did it. Uh, and we, we had been power fishing all morning. I was throwing the buzz bait. He was throwing a frog and working it pretty fast. But when he threw that frog back up there and got his backlash, you know, it took him probably five minutes to get the backlash out. And the, the first twitch of that frog, after he got that backlash out, that snakehead just popped it. And, uh, so, I mean, it, 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 it told me we're, we're fishing too fast. We need to slow down, but, but watching him drag that snakehead in and hold it, holding up a 10 and a half pound fish after he caught it. I think that was my best day fishing this year. That's awesome. Um, my, my other one that I'll give you is, is, is actually me. And that was down at, uh, um, the, um, Lake Ch uh, Chickamania uh, Chick river, uh, was one of our Potomac Bassmasters events down there. And I, I went down there the day before to do a little pre-fishing and, and it was, it was a terrible day of pre-fishing. I, I think I got two strikes in about eight hours and I don't think I caught either one of them. I think I, I missed them both. Uh, so the next morning I went out and, um, you know, kind of changed up what I was doing a little bit. And I started throwing a, 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 a spinner bait that was kind of a brim colored spinner bait and, uh, he caught one in the first probably 10 minutes that was close to five pounds. I think it was about four and a half pounds. Uh, and then, from there, I was just swapping back and forth between that spinner bait and a wacky worm. Um, and, uh, I think on the day I ended up catching about 15 fish and weighed in just slightly over 15 pounds to win that tournament. So that, that was the best, best day I've had that had out there in a long time. And it, uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's awesome. And you got to win on top of it too. I did. So. Yeah. That's, that, that's part of what made it the best day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, Hey Brad, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your channel, what you can expect when people tune in? And by the way, I'll link your uh, channel down in the comments for everybody to uh, go check out your uh, channel. I appreciate that, Shane. Um, yeah. So, so my channel, uh, it, it's very um, unobtrusive, I guess, is a, is a good way to describe it. It's, it's just me out there fishing usually. And if I have somebody with me, I usually set up two cameras. So I have one facing me and one facing them. And I, I, I try to capture what they're doing too. A lot of it's tournament footage. Uh, so a lot of it, you won't see me, you know, I, I don't sit down and talk to the camera much. Most of it's just fishing. Um, if you watch most of my earlier stuff, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll kind of type in, uh, you know, this is what I was fishing with and this is the condition or, or whatnot. Uh, and then, uh, 
more recently in the last video or last couple of videos, I've started doing a voiceover instead of doing that typing in. And I think the voiceover probably works just a little bit better. So that going forward, that's probably what people can expect from my videos. But, uh, um, you know, I, I grew up watching Bill Dance. I don't know. You, you remember Bill Dance? Oh, yeah. And you got the uh, Bill Dance song on your channel. Yeah, he, he was a hero of mine growing up, I guess. I, I, I probably learned more about fishing from him than anybody else that that, uh, that I've ever watched or, or paid attention to. And so my channel is kind of a homage to Bill Dance to a certain extent. Uh, like you said, I've, I've got his theme song on there. Uh, and, and I, you know, I just want people to be able to, you know, enjoy the fishing to a certain extent, but, but also hopefully, uh, you know, maybe pick up a tip here or two, a tip, tip or two here or there as I'm fishing along. And, uh, you know, this, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing here, or this is why I decided to change that, or this is not many times, this is what's not working. Um, so that's, that's what you can expect from my channel. Well, that's awesome. Well, I really enjoy your channel. I, I watch every episode you put out. Um, I, you know, I'm always looking, looking for a tip or an advantage, just like any other fisherman is right. We all, we all can get, gain the experience from just learning from each other a lot of times. So, um, well, Brad, thanks. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us today and, and sharing some time with us. Uh, good luck on your tournament season coming up uh, for next year. If you plan on fishing, I'm sure you sure you'll do a great job. And again, thanks for, for joining us today. I appreciate it, Shane. Thanks for having me on here. And uh, I enjoy watching your channel as well. I, I do pick up a tip here or there from you as well. So uh, you're right. We can't all learn from each other.